As I pointed out in an earlier video that I'll link to floating over my head and or in the description below, in order to determine the delta S, that is the change in entropy value of any chemical process or reaction, we use this equation here where, where delta S for the reaction is equal to the sum, that's what this little epsilon sign means, it means the sum of all of the total combined S for all the products minus the same thing of the reactants. So I'm gonna look up the individual S values for each of the substances in my chemical reaction. I'll add up all the products, put them right here in this equation, and then subtract from that the sum of all of the reactants. And whatever the answer that is, that's the delta S for that reaction process. Does that make sense okay? Now one thing I need to point out, I pointed out elsewhere, but I'm gonna say it again here, is that delta S is not the same thing as a regular S. S without the little delta in front of it is an individual term that each substance in existence has, okay? And S can never be negative. The lowest it could possibly be is zero if you go all the way down to zero kelvins, which is also negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. So you get really, really cold, you can get S all the way down to zero, you can't ever go negative. However, delta S can be negative or positive or zero depending on what the values are here. So delta S is just the difference between the S values of products and those of reactants. Does that distinction make sense, okay? So for this first reaction, reaction I, I'm gonna take all of the S values here for the products and subtract the sum of those for the reactants. I'll do the same thing with reaction II, of course, but where did I get these terms or these values? I got it from Appendix C at the end of the text that I recommend for my students. Now, for any of you who are watching this who don't have that, you could probably just look up online thermodynamic table or thermodynamic data or entropy data table or something like that and find a table that would give you this or you could access a similar table for you know pr from probably any general chemistry textbook regardless of addition I assume now one thing that I stress for my students though is that when you look up data on a table you need to make sure that you identify the correct formula and physical states uh, solid liquid or gas for example if you look up C2H4 uh, you need to make sure that you're looking up gas and put your number that is associated with C2H4 for gas. If you happen to find a table that shows the entropy value for C2H4 liquid or solid, those values will be different. Same thing goes for everything else across the board. You need to make sure that you focus in on the value for the uh, correct formula and that correct formula in its correct physical state, solid, liquid, or gas. So you need to pay attention to the little letter S, L, or G written next to the formula in the equation or you might get it wrong. Does that make sense? So I invite all of my students to check these numbers that I've written up here with the appendix uh, C table at the end of our text, okay? One other detail that might cause some confusion is the difference between S and delta H. As I pointed out elsewhere, delta H is enthalpy and S or even delta S is associated with entropy. Okay, enthalpy for any substance that's in its elemental form and correct physical state at 298 Kelvin, which is 25 degrees Celsius, which is around room temperature, is zero. So for example, if you looked up the delta H of formation of H2 gas, it would be zero. Uh, if you looked up the delta H of formation of O2 gas, it would be zero because hydrogen in its elemental state has a formula of H2 and it is a gas at room temperature. Analogous thing for oxygen, O2 gas. Makes sense? However, that is not true. That, that zero value for delta H of formation for these substances is not true for S. All substances have positive S values because they do have some amount of disorder, even in their elemental formulas and states, okay? So don't get that confused. When we have a non-zero number here, it's because we're talking about S, not delta H. With all of that said, let's now do this problem. So we're gonna take our product, which is 229.5. We'll lay it down right here in our formula, 229.5. And then I'm gonna subtract from it the sum of these two terms, 219.4 and 130.58. When I did that, I ended up getting negative 120.5 joules per mole Kelvin. It's sometimes written joules per Kelvin mole. I like to write it as joules per mole Kelvin because I sometimes like to call it joules per mole. <laughs> anyway, so I've written that up here as the delta S for this reaction, okay? Now I'm gonna clear the board down here and we'll do the analogous thing for reaction II.
Reaction II is a little bit more involved because there are coefficients next to these reactants and products that are not one. See up here, we had all ones. There's no coefficient written, so it's an implied or understood one. But over here, we've got a two and a three and a two and a four, and that all comes into play when we write down or insert our numbers into this equation. For example, if I want to find the total sum of all the entropy values for the products, I have to start with, I guess, H2O, and I have to multiply that number by four. See, because I have four H2Os, or four molar equivalents of H2O in this balanced equation. So I'm going to take 188 times 4. So I'll just write 4 times 188, I guess, 0.83. And then I'm going to add to that. And I guess I'll wrap parentheses around that to keep that you know, all organized. And I'm going to add to that the 213.6 times 2, because I've got a 2 coefficient in front of that. Okay, so this is the sum, or should be the sum, of all of the product entropies. You see how that works? And then I'm going to subtract from that the analogous term for my reactant en entropies. So I've got uh, 3 times 205 for my O2 plus 2 times 237.6. And wow, I almost ran out of board here. So again, these are my product entropies combined. And I'm going to subtract from it these, which are my reactant entropies, OK, all combined. So if I do the, and when you do this, be very, very careful doing it into your calculator. Be very, very careful. Use parentheses. Use multiple steps if you need to to make sure that you get it correct. When I was all done doing this, however, I ended up getting positive 92.32 joules per mole Kelvin, which I wrote up here uh, as the delta S for this reaction II. So here are my two answers, negative 120.5 for reaction I and positive 92.32 for reaction II. I, 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 which lines up with answer B.